Uh, welcome back friends. Today we are going to see a very important topic in laparoscopy which is laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So this is one of the most widely done surgeries all over the world. I think every surgeon, an aspiring surgeon should have a knowledge of doing a proper and safe laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So first let us get into the indications for a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. This being the commonest procedure done worldwide, we need to be sure about the indications of laparoscopic cholecystectomy. The first indication is of course somebody with a biliary colic because of gallstones. Second, when somebody has an acute infection because of stones which is acute calculus cholecystitis. The third one is asymptomatic gallstones. Many a times we operate on people with asymptomatic gallstones. But let us see the indications in people with asymptomatic gallstones who have to undergo a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. The next important indication is gallstone pancreatitis. So when pancreatitis is induced by gallstones, definitely we need to do laparoscopic cholecystectomy depending on the severity. If it is mild, it can be done in the same sitting. When it is moderate or severe, it can be postponed for about six weeks so that an interval cholecystectomy is being performed. Finally, when somebody has an obstructive jaundice due to a CBD calculus, so which is a secondary calculus, which has come from a gallstones. So that is the last indication for a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. These are the established indications for a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Let us now see who are the patients who are having asymptomatic gallstones or who will be candidates for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. First, somebody with a biliary dyskinesia. So, somebody who has a gallstone and also has an associated biliary dyskinesia will be a candidate for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. When somebody is immunocompromised, with any form of gallbladder disease. You know, it can be not only just gallstones, you know, any form of gallbladder disease in a immunocompromised patient is an indication for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Again, patients who are awaiting organ transplants, patients who are having sickle cell disease, when there is an associated gallbladder polyp which is more than one centimeter in size. So, a patient who is having asymptomatic gallstone with an associated gallbladder polyp of more than one centimeter. Finally, if somebody has gallstones which are more than three centimeters in diameter is an indication for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Now, now having seen the indications for laparoscopic cholecystectomy, we should also know the contraindications for a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Again, it can be divided into relative and absolute contraindication. If you look at the relative contraindication, when somebody has undergone a previous abdominal surgery, in the epigastrium or the right upper quadrant. So, is a relative contraindication because you have to be careful. Now, if somebody you know who is a beginner is going to operate on somebody with a previous abdominal surgery in the epigastric region, definitely is going to have a lot of problems. So, that is a relative contraindication for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. When somebody has an end stage liver disease, this is definitely a nightmare even for very senior people. Okay, so, when somebody has an end stage liver disease because you can have multiple vessels running in the calotte's triangle. When somebody has a cholecystoentric fistula, for example, somebody with a gallstone ileus, definitely you know it will be a relative contraindication, but in experts hands you know it can still be possible. When somebody has a type 2 mirizy, a type 1 mirizy definitely you can go ahead do a safe laparoscopic cholecystectomy. When you have a type 2 mirizy, no, it needs some amount of expertise to really go ahead to do a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Finally, when somebody has a calcified gallbladder wall, example a porcelain gallbladder, it is a relative contraindication. Let us go into the absolute contraindications for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Definitely, somebody with a known invasive gallbladder carcinoma. Here, we are not talking about an incidental gallbladder carcinoma discovered post laparoscopic cholecystectomy. When somebody has a known invasive gallbladder carcinoma, it is an absolute contraindication for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. When somebody has uncorrected coagulopathy, 
you will be in soup if you go ahead with laparoscopic cholecystectomy. And finally, as you all know, inability to tolerate general anesthesia is definitely an absolute contraindication for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So, these are the contraindications for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Now, there is another question which is usually asked because we all know that the rate of conversion internationally is about 5 percent. You know, who are starts, you know, 95 percent, you know, on an average we are able to complete a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. In 5 percent of the cases, there is a high chance of conversion to open. So, let us look at the various indications for conversion to open. So, one is when you encounter an excessive bleeding because when you encounter excessive bleeding, you know, in panic people start applying a lot of clips and inadvertently damage the biliary ducts. So, that is why when somebody has an excessive bleeding, it is better to convert. You know, a minimal bleeding is something which is, uh, which can be controlled laparoscopically. Second, when the anatomy is unclear, this is something we need to understand. We all have to remember that anatomy in gallbladder, in the region of the gallbladder is abnormal in 60 percent of the cases. So, never take it for granted the anatomy of this region. So, whenever the anatomy is unclear, it is always better to convert to open surgery. So, conversion to open is not a failure, you know, it is always done for the reason of safety of the patient. Finally, when you encounter multiple vessels or a very large cystic duct encountered during surgery, because usually you do not encounter very large cystic ducts, you know, many a times we will just start thinking that it is a very large cystic duct. You know, whenever you have a very large cystic duct, especially when it was normal on an ultrasound, you know, you have done an ultrasound, the ultrasonologist has said the cystic duct is normal, but when you are encountering a large cystic duct, there is a high chance of that being a common bile duct. So, these are some of the indications for conversion to open. And uh, this is a list of people where the rate of conversion is higher in a male gender, when somebody has an elevated white blood cell count, a low serum albumin, a pericholecystic fluid noted on ultrasonography, somebody who is having diabetes mellitus, elevated total bilirubin, a positive Murphy sign when the gallbladder wall thickness exceeds 4 mm and somebody with previous upper abdominal surgery. So, these are the people who have got a higher propensity for con conversion to open. So, now that uh, we have looked at the indications, contraindications and the indications for opening in, a, in patients with, for, who are undergoing laparoscopic cholecystectomy, let us go into the important part of our whole lecture which is which are the various steps in performing a safe laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Now, we will divide the steps into first port placements, second ap appropriate traction of gallbladder. This is very, very important. Identification of important landmarks. No, this is absolutely essential if you are going to do a safe laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Dissection of calotte triangle, clipping and division of artery and duct, gallbladder bed dissection and finally extraction of specimen.